A number of years back, I was a, a deacon. I was on a little trip in France with a friend of mine. And um, we were taking a little road trip and visiting the, the holy sites. And it was the feast day of uh, Mary, Mother of God, the 1st of January. And we were driving and we were trying to get to Mass. We drove past dozen churches and we stopped at doors and knocked on them and uh, none of the churches were open and uh, the whole day we just tra- kept trying to get to mass and we couldn't we had gone to mass the night before and had fulfilled our obligation but that wasn't why we were going we were in the habit of going to mass every day and receiving holy communion and participating in the holy sacrifice and it was it was a disappointment that we weren't able well, the next day we were driving and we were going to head up to like Omaha Beach. But then we saw that we were actually very close to uh, Mount saint Michel, which is this really cool um, kind of town built on a rock in the ocean with this huge Gothic spire in the, at the very top of it. And so we rerouted and we went there and we got up to the top of the town and we got to the church just in time for Holy Mass. And then at Mass, the nuns and the monks sang everything in four part harmony. It was just gorgeous, resonating off of these high Gothic arches. And we got to participate in Mass and receive Holy Communion. And it was a, it was a great satisfaction, a great culmination to our longing of the day before and our disappointment of the day before. I've been reflecting a lot on this right now, uh, this absence of Holy Communion right now for the faithful. Obviously as priests, we, as part of our vocation, we celebrate the mysteries every single day. We, we have to receive Holy Communion when we celebrate the Mass, we're not permitted not to. And yet the faithful are deprived And so I I say this with the acknowledgement that I I don't know what that's like. In the past 10 years or more, 15 years since I've been going to daily Mass, I've missed a handful of days. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what you're going through, but I do want to offer some reflections that might be of some comfort to you. Many people are, are distressed over not being able to receive Holy Communion. And that's, that's totally understandable. I would, I would suggest this as a question though. What is Holy Communion? Have you ever received Holy Communion? Yeah, every week maybe you go to Mass and you take the host. But what does that mean to receive Holy Communion? What is the very word even mean? It doesn't take, uh, you know, a a linguist to look at the word and and think about it and say, okay, come union, with union, uh, with unity. Um, So Holy Communion isn't so much a thing which I take, but it is a relationship in which I live. It's a state of being, a state of being in communication with God, being in communion with God, being one with God. So we can look at an analogy. Uh, A man and a woman pledge their lives to each other at the altar in a lifelong union. And what does that union look like? Well, it's a shared life. Two individuals now share a house and a dog and finances and kids and they hug and they kiss and they sleep in the same bed. But most of these things are really just physical union, proximity. Uh, at, At best, a marriage is something deeper. A married couple shares their thoughts, they share their feelings, their prayers, their deepest desires. In fact, their goal is to have one will with the other person. In fact, that's what constitutes a a real strong 
union is to love and desire and to will the exact same thing. So we also see in, in a marriage relationship that this unity is not bound by proximity. Often it happens that you know, a husband or a wife has to travel and they're not together. And so in those times, they remain united by continuing to check in. They call, they text, they FaceTime. Uh, right now, a lot of us are going through this. We're learning how to be united with somebody who's, who's distant from us. But even more than that, there's, there's still a, a, a continued influence of, of the couple. One can imagine uh, the husband being somewhere on a business trip, perhaps, and perhaps he's about to order the fried whatever it is on the menu. And then he hears his wife's voice in his head. Okay, yeah, it's probably, probably not good for me. Maybe I won't do that. I'll have, I'll have a sandwich or a salad instead. And so they continue to have influence. They're still, they're still desiring the same thing. They're still learning to desire the same thing, even though separated by uh, physical proximity. So we see that the, that moral union, that spiritual connection is more important than the physical connection. And this is true also with our relationship with God. Our spiritual or moral unity with God is primary. We can call this union, this relationship, our holy communion. Our goal as Catholics, as Christians, is to always be living in communion. And what does that look like? Well, it looks like a shared life, like with spouses. We talk to him. We thank him. We think of him. We do things for him. We spend time with him. We listen to him. And sometimes we get to receive him in the Blessed Sacrament. But in comparison with the rest of our life, this form of you know, physical unity, however often it is, is still extremely rare. Once a week, once a day. But our goal is to be living in Holy Communion with him at every moment of every single day. I'll continue to reflect on this a little bit more in subsequent videos, but I think there's a, a good start for us. How can we live in this holy communion?